to my brand new Let's Play of Croc 2. Before we start I have to... Okay, I can't delete it. Well, I have... I had a failed recording because my mic is a heap of shit. But anyway, we're gonna start a new game. I will give different initials to my practice file because then I won't be confused. Yes, I do want to... I do want to save. You're going to tell me I don't have any space to save. God, where did that save? to start off in the first village which we were flung to on a seesaw called Sailor Village. There is quite a few nice easy levels. We're going to talk to this guy first because we have to. So these little balls of fluff are known as gobbos. Dantinis were the things you would have seen in the initial cutscene, the red things. Um, the big guy's name who came out of the pot, I cannot remember for the life of me. But he's the bad guy. This guy is telling us about Swap Meat Pete, so we get a Swap Meat Pete card. He's very busy counting crates. Most crates got ginger soda inside. Basically, that's giving us, a, telling us we need to break open this crate much more successfully than what I'm doing. We get some magic eye zoomers, also known as binoculars. They don't really come in handy too much, ever. So, as you can see, here's the sort of village level. There's lots of little sub levels there that we need to go and complete. I am going to attempt to do a 100% run of this game. 
I say attempt because this game gets real hard real quick. So this is the King of Sailor Village. He's having a little fish. He has some nice words of wisdom to say. But before we start any of the levels, there's a couple of things you're going to want to do first. Because it just makes it easier for you. So we're going to talk to this gobbo. Who is going to talk like this. Because apparently that's how you talk on a trampoline. So we need to jump higher than him. So stomping's not going to work. We need to do a triple stomp, which is something they don't really tell you about in this game. But so it's X to jump, two X's to stomp, and as you hit your stomp on the the ground. So we got a hundred coins, hundred crystals for that, which is nice. So you got your normal jump, you got your stomp. Um, but if you want to get a nice high jump, if you hit your, get your timing right like I did before, but not now, and hit X as you're about to hit your stomp, you will get, do a triple jump of sorts, which becomes very help, helpful because it's how you got to get a lot of things in this game. So a nice little tutorial game for us. Jump, tail attack, stomp. And that will give us a heart pot, which is really helpful because heart pots are expensive. They're about 250 coins a pot. So, yep. So we will, which we do not have. Plus, there are other items we'll need to buy in order to get 100%. So, um, I would recommend we go do the boat race first because it is probably the easiest one to do. Before we get into that, each level has five colored crystals. You need to get all five of them to get the golden gobbo. Get enough golden gobos, you unlock the golden gobo door, and then in the golden gobo door there's another level, you get a puzzle piece. Most levels also have a hundred crystals, they're not required to a hundred percent the game, but if you get all a hundred crystals in a level, it just refills your heart. So if it's worth it to you, go ahead and do it. But I find because I'm not good at this game, um, it's easier just to not get a hundred if it's gonna kill me. So, they're gonna. we have to race the Dalantinis, which look like Angry Elmos. Um, they're gonna speed off, you can't do anything about that, there is no way to get a speedier start. Oh my god, okay, so there's one crystal there, which you should not miss. Um, but this is the easiest one to get all five crystals in, there's another one, which I again missed. Let's pretend, it's alright, we got three laps, so um... Don't be too concerned because if you don't get it first lap, you can get them second because it takes two laps because... Hey, out of my way. Angry Elmo. Stop it. I don't know why, but these things always reminded me when they're sitting in the boat like that. They reminded me of Elmo's and I don't know why. Apart from the eyes because they've got the angry eyes. So we want to hug the left side here to get this third crystal. Um. You would have seen the waterfall just before, that's actually a shortcut, which has another crystal in it, so we will go through that and get that crystal. But firstly, we're going to make sure we get the crystals I missed, because that was just a big fail on my part. There's going to be a lot of failing. Although this is a children's game, it's... It is hard. It gets deceptively difficult. But we will see how we go. I can't guarantee I'm going to get 100%. It's just too hard. The good thing about this level as well is when you just they like, give you the gold, golden gobbo straight away whereas in most other levels you actually have to go to a it um, teleports you once you have your five crystals to another like mini area and you have to in order to get your golden gobbo you have to go through that to get it and you get one shot at that if you die in there you have to do the whole thing again not normally the level if you complete the level that's fine but if you die in there, you have to go back and redo the level to get all five crystals. It's a pain. Really, this is probably the best mission to start out with because it's incredibly easy. You just keep your finger on the accelerator and you will catch them and win. There is actually a race later on in the quite a later level. I haven't actually gotten that far in the game before, but apparently it's hard. Yeah, you might think, hey, stop doing that, Angry Elmo. So if you take your shortcuts 
once you have the other crystal going the other way. You, this is a pretty easy race to win, plus you'll get 100 coins for it, so gives you some spending monies in Shop Meat Pete's Swap. Swap Meat Pete's Shop. So we'll go give Swap Meat Pete a visit because in order to 100% this game you need to buy some items. So, as you can see this jumping little gobbo now has the golden gobbo symbol above his head which means we got the golden gobbo. This is the golden gobbo door which will open when we have enough. So we need to head back to Swap Meet Pete's shop, who is a giant cat who owns a shop, and his voice cracks me up every time. Um, so this is basically my one of my favourite games ever. It's the first game I ever played as a kid, and I really wanted to do the, an LP of this. And now that I've got a capture card and I've you know done a, f a couple of LPs, now I'm not going to dodge it up. I want to do a really good job of it. I want to try and do as close to 100%, if not 100%. Um, so yeah, it's the first game I played, and that was about 10 years ago. So for the next level, we're going to probably do in the next episode. We need one orange jelly and a clockwork gobbo. Um, you have to make sure you buy the right ones because the other ones will not work. As Swap Meet Pete is telling us there. Unfortunately, you can't make the text for Swap Meet Pete's speed up without accidentally buying things, so that's... This is a clockwork gobbo. So yeah, this is probably... This game has a lot of nostalgia value for me. Um, I haven't actually completed it, so hopefully with this LP I can complete it. Well, I want to complete it before I actually finish this LP so I don't stuff it up. But we will leave Swap Meet Pete, who's voice crackers ever since I played this ten years ago it still cracks me up to this day I just think I don't know what it is about it it's hilarious but a lot of all the characters sound like that none of them speak any sort of English whatsoever I'm going the wrong way because that's not the level I want to do but I've got to say I love the music in this game it is so I just love the music in this game because it's quite good well, that's what I think anyway I'm not biased or anything I just love... Oh, maybe I was going the right way. My bad. I have played this... I, sh I should have played this first village enough to know. So there are five villages, I believe. It's definitely three I'm aware of. Three I've played. Um, then there's all these mini levels, so... I'm gonna, you don't have to talk to them to go in. If you can skip them, you can... If you go around wide enough, you can avoid them, but we'll show you what he's saying. So I'm not exactly sure why they live with the Dantinis, but they do, and now we have to go and help them with all their issues. And we being the hero, we will do this, but all of this is actually in an attempt to find our parents, which is what the second cutscene was about, which is what that note was about, because Croc does not know where his parents are. I'm not exactly sure what happened there. I'm sure there's some sort of story that goes with it. But something about, yeah, baby crocodile is found by the friendly gobbos. I'm reading this straight from the manual, by the way. Who inhabit the gobbo islands. The king's name is Rufus. What a name. But yeah, anyway, I'm hoping that I'll be able to do a really good job of this Let's Play. Uh, so thank you all for watching this first episode, and I will see you in the next episode.